I don't believe capitalism is the ultimate form of human organisation, necessarily the most fair. Um, and I don't believe in inherited class privilege. That's not to say I wouldn't help my children. But my main aim in life is not to set up some big business so my kids are millionaires so they can go sunbathing every year and go to private schools next to other rich kids. That's not how I think about the world and that's not what I will, my vision for the world. I understand why for a lot of people from tough backgrounds that becomes the way they see things. I don't ever want my kids to go through the stuff that I went through. And to a degree I share that. But I also don't really give a damn about living in a mansion and driving a Lamborghini. I wish I did but I, I wish those things motivated me because people would be more like, oh, do you know why man's driving this or he lives there? But I'm just not that bothered about those things. There's things that I find more important and I find inspiring other human beings more important. It's ironic that me seeing the world that way has, meant, has, has brought me some degree of financial security. But I don't think, particularly for black people, if we understand the history of the way Euro European capitalism developed, it's very dangerous for us to say this is you know, the aim. The aim is to become just Warren Buffet in blackface. Donald Trump in blackface, you know. Where does, where, what's the source of the wealth of these people, these legitimate corporations that we're imitating? Where do the minerals come from that are in all of our products? I'm not gonna name any individual corporations, not because I'm scared, but it's because I don't wanna give them free advertising and I'm a hypocrite, I use their products. But the coltan that's in all of the mineral-based products in this room, I know where it comes from. Most of it comes from the Congo. How many people have had to die for that to get there? So do I want to be like the companies that run this thing and be seen as a legitimate businessman that does nothing but exploit the poorer half or the poorer two thirds of humanity? Or is there another way of doing trade? And actually when we look at history, and this is not to be romantic, there are other ways of doing trade. For hundreds and hundreds of years, East Africa, the Middle East, and, and the so-called Far East, China, India, etc., had a, a semi-global system of trade. Was there co forms of colonialism? Sure. Were there forms of forced servitude? Sure. Was it a paradise? Probably not. But for six or seven hundred years, we know for certain none of those civilizations were shattered by mu mutual interaction with one another. So on some level, they formed a degree of equilibrium in their trade and benefited from it. There's coins from China in Zimbabwe, 1500 years ago. We know these things, right? There's pieces of pottery from Lebanon in India. There's Gujarati merchants found off the coast of Madagascar. In fact, Indonesians came all the way from Java, they weren't called Indonesians then, to Madagascar. And so some of the uh, indigenous population of, in, of Madagascar, all the way there off the coast of East Africa, from Indonesia. So there's been global systems of trade and cooperation. No one's saying that business, and if you got yams and I got planting, I want some yams to go with my planting. Boom, let's do a swap. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is when I say, ah, oh, you got yams, I got planting, and I want all your yams. And furthermore, I'm gonna kill you as well and take your yams. That's the issue. To an extent, certainly, that is the, the global system of economic exploitation we live in. So for me, I would like to see more economically privileged people of colour challenging systems of economic exploitation as well, not acting like, oh, well, we made it, we're bored now, we got money. I get that kind of foolishness, but particularly in Britain and America, we're of African origin and the wealth of Britain and America are linked to the, dramatically linked to the exploitation of Africa in the Caribbean. So directly or indirectly, whether we like it or not, we kind of benefit from that. Where does Jamaica's aluminium go? Where does Ghana's cocoa go? Where do all the, and fine, there might be an African elite that facilitates these things to a degree, but those that haven't, where have they ended up? Dead. So for me, it's also about us not reproducing the same bullshit in blackface. Because I'm not, I'm not, oh, I've got money, so I'm better than you, you know. What are you leaving your kids? Okay, well, some of the people that have changed history, particularly for black people, have not been rich people. Malcolm X wasn't a rich man, Harriet Tubman wasn't a rich man, Martin Luther King wasn't a rich man, you know. I could give you a whole list of people that have done far more for mine and yours access to sit in this pretty room and talk foolishness, right? And they weren't rich people. So I think we got to stay away from just valuing people because of the things that they have and actually look what they're bringing to the table personally. That's not me romanticising poverty because I'm all, I also agree, like, I'm not one of these fools that thinks it's romantic to be poor. It's not a pleasant experience not having and being next to people that have everything. But what are we willing to do to not be in that scenario? Are we willing to do anything and F over anyone just to have a little bit of money in our pocket? I don't, I don't agree with that either.